Right, all of that just established, ta-da, now I have an expression and I want to maximize this. You look at the question, it says, show that theta is maximized when the viewer is, and then they give you a distance for x. Okay. So here's the part where we break out this calculus that we've just learned and we give it a shot on these guys. Okay. So let's give this a go. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this in a form that will make chain rule a little bit easier for me. Because every time I differentiate one of these, there's a function on the inside I've got to differentiate. I don't like dealing with it like that. I'm going to write it in this form, because then I can just bring the power out the front, reduce the power by one. It makes it a lot, lot less brain work for me. Okay? So I'm just going to rewrite it like this. Okay? And now I'm ready to launch into my derivative. Okay? So this is part B d theta on dx. I want to see how is theta changing as x changes. That's what this derivative means. Okay. So have a go. Okay. We'll do the inside, then we'll do the outside. What is the derivative of the inside here? Can someone just state it for me? Minus four. Negative four. X to the negative two. The power drops down. Okay. Now for this next part, I then say, okay, I've done the inside, I'm going to do the outside now. The derivative of tan inverse is, we did, it was the first one we did this morning. One on one plus, one on one plus x squared, with one difference. I don't have x, which is nice and neat in there. I've got that disaster, okay? So I'm going to go one on one plus that squared, which is 16 on x squared. Yep. Um, now, I, I suppose I could have done it in the index notation like this, but there's no clear advantage there. The reason this is useful is so I get that right. Okay? And then I'm just going to rehearse the result for the next part, the 3 on x part. Okay, so let's just quickly do that. Minus. Okay, now this looks like a bit of a royal mess, but that's okay. We can deal with it. Don't get overwhelmed by how long it is. Just step through it one step by one step. Also, you can notice, for example, see that x to the negative 2, right? That means it's really negative 4 on x squared. So good with that? That's actually really good for me. That's going to make things nice and neat because this x squared and that x squared are going to cancel. Okay, so let's quickly go through that. Now, if you'd like to scrutinize my steps, you're welcome to have a look. However, just for the sake of brevity, because we're not, we're not out of the woods. This is just the warm up for this question, right? I have derivative. What am I going to do with it? What's the point of getting this derivative? Yeah, I'm, I'm searching for turning points, right? So therefore, I'm going to say turning points may occur, because I don't actually know. Turning points may occur when this derivative is zero. Now I'm going to just let that equal to zero, but you can see the important part, the part that matters, is this guy up here. Okay, this is irrelevant to me. So I can say here is the derivative. And even though this denominator is gross, it's immaterial to me. Okay? That's equal to zero. So therefore, 12 minus x squared is equal to zero. Um, okay, now I need to pause for a second because just like up here, and something has disappeared and I better account for the fact that it's disappeared. What's missing off the end of that line? Yeah, there's a negative answer that comes out of the solution of this, but I don't need it because okay. x is a length, right? Always come back. So I'm going to say here at this point when I've eliminated the negative solution, x is zero um, as it's a length. Okay. 
Okay. So this, I think, was the part B um, result they want us to show. This is 2 root 3, I believe. Okay. Now, I'm still not out of the woods yet. I've found the place, but the question said, show when theta is maximized. Now, at the moment, I know it's going to probably be a turning point, but I haven't even showed that, let alone that it's a maximum. What do I need to do now? Okay, I have to test somehow. You've got two ways to test. What are the two ways? Table of values or secondary root. Come on, you can see. Clearly, I should go for the table of values here. I don't even want to think about that denominator, okay? So here's what you're going to get. Uh, 2 root 3. Root 3 is like 1.7-ish, so you double that. It's 3 point something. So a nice value on the left would be 3. A nice value on the right would be 4. Okay, so you're going to have to have your table here. Uh, this is x and the theta on dx. You've got your one, two, three values you're going to test. You already know what's going to happen here. And just because I'm interested in saving your time, I have some values here. And you really do need these values. We've established this before. Okay, you can't just say, yeah, it should be negative, positive, or positive, negative, because that's... Like, the question tells you what kind of turning point it should be, and therefore you're, it's our responsibility to show that. So this is going up, cross, down. There's my maximum. So I can say, therefore, theta is maximized at. Okay. Now, pause for a second. The last question, I'm going to let you think about it as I rub this border. The last part of this says, show that the maximum angle, like what theta is, subtended by the picture is, and then they give you a number, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm gonna write it here in another color so you can refer to it in case you don't have your book open. This is the number they provide. That's what they're contending theta is equal to, okay? Question to you, to ponder as I wipe this off. How do you go about that? How do you arrive at this expression, okay? We've got all this set up. What are you going to do with it? I'll let you have a think while I rubble this and get some working space. Okay, well, let's launch into this and let's see what happens, okay? So I have an expression for theta. I showed it in part 1a, whatever it is, okay? Theta is equal to 10 inverse of this, take away 10 inverse of that. And I know what x is, right? So I'm going to just launch in 10 inverse of, and then if x is equal to that, I believe I've got this, take away... This, okay? Now you look at that, you're like, okay, I've got 10 inverses, that's a good sign, okay? But how do I put these two things together? Like they're kind of messy in and of themselves. And if you go one step further, you look and you say, okay, how much can I simplify here? And you say 10 inverse of that will be two on root three. And this guy will be root three on two. Root three on two is nice but not when you're dealing with 10. So these are not like nicely exact values, right? We su I suppose we should have known that when we looked at this and think, okay, that's where I'm gonna end up. If that's as good as it gets, what am I gonna do? Okay. Now, oh, oh, oh. yeah, I wanna suggest? Cause you, you make a right angle triangle? I could form a right angle triangle which has a theta in it, okay? No, no, but I mean, like, you just like, Make a right angle triangle and then just whatever call like the angle. Mm -hmm. the angle yeah, with these. Okay. So there are a couple of problems with that. Firstly, I'm going to need two triangles, right, which won't coexist. But secondly, once I get them, like, where do I go with them? There aren't exact values that fit on those. So here is the suggestion, okay? I need to get out of this messy thing. How do I get rid of 10 inverses that are messy? 10. 10. 10 will get rid of them, right? If I take 10 of both sides, I'll get a 10 theta on here, which is counterintuitive because you're like, wait, I've got theta already. Why do I want to make it messier? Answer is because this is too messy to deal with at the moment. Now watch out though, this is alpha minus beta. These are two angles. So 10 of this side is theta, but 10 of this side is not just two on root three and root three on two. It's 10 of this, minus this, which sounds to me like a compound angle, is it not? This is 10 of alpha minus beta, okay? 
I know it seems like we've got a long way to go, but I promise I'm going to finish before half the school leaves, okay? Watch. 10 of alpha minus beta, right, is 10 of alpha, which is just 2 on root 3, minus 10 of beta, which is just root 3 on 2, right? Unlike before when we had 10 inverse of 10, now I've got 10 of 10 inverse, which is always the same. That, that's just y equals x forever, right? Divided by 1 plus 10 alpha, which is 2 on root 3, times 10 beta, which is root 3 on 2. This is just 1, okay? So this looks a bit messy here, but once you deal with the surds, and that's all that's left, you should come out the bottom with this. And you look and think, oh no! It's as simple as it gets! But it's not the number I wanted. Yes, it is. All we have to do is multiply through. And that gives you this, but don't forget this is 10 theta. One last step. Take inverse 10. And then you're home.